Is it, what drives you? Is it a sense of injustice? Is it uh, identification with the underdog, something else? Yeah, it, well, it's a sense of, of justice. You know, it's a sense of somebody has got to speak. You know, nobody spoke for me and my brothers or any of them in the boys' home. They were, we were all like brothers in the boys' home. We fought with each other, but man, you mess with us on the street. We are the biggest gang you've ever wanted to, to see. But nobody spoke for us. I remember when I, I was at a conference, an international conference on uh, social workers and psychologists, and where they were talking about the child care system in the world, I guess. And so they asked me to speak. And there were a couple of people from Montreal. And one of them puts up her hand and she says, we, we used to send the boys to Weirdale, to the boys' home. And yeah, we knew certain things were going on, but what are you going to do? Where are we going to put 180 boys? And I looked at her and I said, two things here. You knew what was going on. But in the whole time, the four and a half years I was in a boys' home, we never saw a social worker. No one ever came to check on us. They put us in this piece of garbage place, this abusive place, this Dickensian place. But they never came to find out what was happening to us. Secondly, I said to her, um, no one said that you had to close the place down. Just the, uh, but, but you're saying all this rotten stuff happened. I said, I didn't say close the place down. All you had to do was go and get the sadists, arrest them, charge them, throw them in jail, and bring in a bunch of people who actually gave a shit about these kids. Because every one of those boys who was in there were just kids. But I could tell you, they filled the penitentiaries in Quebec after they got out. Lots of them. They had horrific lives. And I could tell you that I know at least 20 who were shot to death in gangland slings from my generation in the boys' home. From my generation. So, you know, it's, it's a sense of justice that pushes me forward. It's a sense of saying, these people can't speak for themselves. So someone's got to speak. I don't want to cover politicians. Yap, 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 yap. They're full of beans. They say they're going to do something, they don't unless they're embarrassed into it. I don't like listening to them. I don't want to cover parliament. I don't want to cover provincial legislatures because all you hear is the same garbage. Garbage in, garbage out. And all the reporters are there because they want to rub elbows with power. You want power? Go out and do something. Make a difference. And you know, when you make a difference, people pay attention. You know, when I walk into Queen's Park and in the provincial legislature in Ontario, when I walk into the parliament at the House of Commons in, 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 after question period, all the reporters look over because they say, Malrick's here, something's happening. And the politicians go, I've had politicians come up to me, the foreign, the foreign affairs minister, the health minister, the defense minister, whomever, look at me and go, you're not after me, are you? Mm. And I go, your turn's coming. Not they, today. <laughs> yeah, and they laugh, but they're wondering, who is he coming for? Mm. And usually it's someone I've asked for an interview, and they go, no. But I am infamous for the unscheduled interview, because a politician who says no to me, and he's a cabinet minister or she's a cabinet minister, is fair game. You're elected to answer questions, and you may baffle gab during question period, but you don't with me. And I get the camera rolling. You know, a long time ago, when I, was at, when I first joined the CBC at the Fifth Estate, Roger Abbott, who's with the, with the Royal Canadian Air Force, they had a, this big gala with advertising people and everything. So they were introducing, I guess, so-called stars of CBC. And I was asked to be there. So he's introducing me to say a few words. And he goes, he didn't introduce to me as Victor Mallory. He goes, the next guy I'm going to tell you or introduce you to, if he shows up at your house with a camera, behind him, you know your day is ruined. And I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I walked out beaming. I said, yeah, he's actually right. Mm -hmm. Because many, many times I show up with the camera rolling and they know their day is ruined. Mm -hmm. But for a reason, if you're a real bad guy or you're a politician avoiding me to ask the questions that need to be asked and get the answers that need to get, I'm gonna show up for an unscheduled interview. But I was there, and 
my executive producer accepted the the Gemini for best host, and they phoned me, and I actually they didn't phone me. I picked up the, the Globe and Mail and says Malric wins Gemini, nice. and I went, oh, oh, I won. <laughs> so I got this nice Gemini. Nice. And last year and this year uh, on the new one, the Academy for Cinema and Television, uh, two of my documentaries in 2015 and this year, 2016, both won for best information segment. One was called, I uh, uh, can't remember what they were called, no. Anyway, uh, for two of my documentaries. So it's very, very, it's interesting. Uh, I, by the way, I don't go to the award ceremonies. So. Yeah, but those aren't just any award ceremonies. Those are the highest awards in Canada for broadcast journalism. Yeah, I know. You know? But, <laughs> yeah. mm. but yeah. I've won nice awards in the Ukrainian community where I turned up. And what have you won there? The Serenik mm -hmm. from the... Um, from the Shevchenko Foundation, very proud of that because of the work I've done in, in the Ukrainian community on, on stories that I've worked on, including Help Us Help the Children, the documentary for CTV, which was a beautiful documentary. Uh, I won the award from the Social Services in Toronto, beautiful, beautiful award. I went to that because it means something to me that they're honoring me for different kinds of things that I've done. They knew about you know, my book on the Natashas and the trafficking of Ukrainian girls and fighting for the rights of all these girls from the former Soviet states and uh, making that, you know, bringing that to the attention of literally of the world. So those awards mean something to me. Do they have more meaning? Than yeah, it's sort of like they recognize who I am from that community that didn't recognize who I was way back. You know, when, when I got that award, the Social Services Award, and when I got the Shevchenko Medal, I made sure my mother was there, you know, and she's really proud because it's important to her. And I know that being Ukrainian is important to me. It's in my soul.